Greetings, beautiful people. This is Emmanuel Williams with you in the No segment here at 97.7, the beat of the capital. And we have a special segment here. The one, the only, my friend, the Secretary of State, Michael Watson, here with us in the studio today. Welcome to the station, Secretary. Thank you, my friend. Great to be here with you. Always fun to visit. So tell us specifically, what is the role of the Secretary of State? Yeah, so really I like to tell folks in the elevator type speech, it's about three things that in general we do. Number one, elections. Obviously the face of the office, everybody knows it's what we do. Mm -hmm. Kind of oversee elections. And, and one of the things I like to point out is Mississippi's what's known as the bottom up state. So mm -hmm. the real hard work is done with our elections commissioners and our circuit clerks uh, and having relationships and friendships with them and open lines of communication is so important, especially at this time with just a few weeks to go uh, before the election. So that's, that's really the face of the office and a, a big piece of what we do. Business services is yes. the second one there, and that's that's where the breadth of the office comes in. So your LLCs, your corporations, your nonprofits, your charities, your securities, your scrap metal dealers, your sports agents. I could keep going. You get the picture. Mm -hmm. Most of those folks um, deal with us probably on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. um, during dealing with regulations, dealing with you name it, um, forming their businesses, mm -hmm. uh, updating their registration, etc. And that's kind of the the piece where a lot of folks kind of don't understand exactly what it is that we do, and that's where Again, uh, you talk about all the businesses basically in the state at some point in time interact with our office. So uh, that's the second one. And then lastly, uh, public lands. So 16th section lands, mm -hmm. uh, to fund public education, tax forfeited properties, which has been a big conversation here in Jackson of late. Uh, and then lastly, Tideland on the coast. So uh, mm -hmm. the, the lands where uh, basically the ebb and, ebb and, ebb and flow of the, the tide, the tidal action comes up and down. And so the lands that that covers and, and uh, the casinos, restaurants, uh, commercial activity, when they lease that space, they pay money to the state uh, to have those leases. So it's kind of a quick explanation of title. It's really um, high level explanation, a lot more than that. But those are kind of the three areas. And again, I, you know, I appreciate you asking that. I think one of the most important things is that people understand if they need help in those areas, I want them to know who to call. Yeah. And maybe even more importantly, if they see something going wrong in those areas, I want them to know who to hold accountable. Yeah. I think that's an important piece for all elected officials we, we do a much better job when people are paying attention and we know that they're watching uh, so they can hold us accountable and that's what they're supposed to be doing. So let's start with, with I think, uh, the perfect place is to just kind of dive right in into those three things that you talked about. So in terms of election season, mm -hmm. of course, we're only a couple of weeks ago, what are some important dates that people need to be mindful of? Well, I was Other than November 5th. November 5th is a big one. <laughs> uh, I was going to start with that one. Uh, November 2nd is the last day for them to vote in-person absentee. Okay. Uh, those two Saturdays, the one prior to that, and that Saturday. So that's clerks. what, October 26th, right? I believe that's right. Yeah. Uh, and then November 2nd. So the clerk's office will be open from 8 to noon. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to be busy on election day and they've got one of the reasons that they can vote absentee, please make sure you're making plans now. Uh, don't get to the last minute and think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to make a good chance to vote. Uh, think through your schedule now. Make those plans. And then obviously on election day, uh, Paul's will be open from 7 to 7. Uh, so make sure that's where... Um, we're aware of that. Uh, if you're voting by mail, uh, that's a question we've been asked a lot of late. There's been a lot of conversations about the USPS. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the National Association of Secretaries of State has, has done a lot of heavy lifting dealing with um, the USPS and getting their timelines much better on turnarounds when it comes to election mail. Uh, we think they're going to do a better job this year, we hope. Uh, but I wouldn't take any chances on that. Mm -hmm. In Mississippi, if you're voting by mail, you can actually cast it on election day, as long as it's postmarked on election day, and receive within five business days thereafter. Mm -hmm. What the Postal Service is saying is give yourself at least seven days. Okay. So I would encourage folks, don't wait until the last minute. Uh, you could take that chance and your ballot may arrive, but it may not. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage folks uh, as early as they can, if they're going to vote by mail, make sure you're voting that as quickly as possible so that we'll you know, receive, be received by the clerk's office and your vote will count. So just a reminder, on election day, Ideally, what do I need to have with me to make sure I can vote when I get to my precinct? Yeah, you want to take your ID. Uh -huh. uh, Mississippi allows 10 forms uh, of IDs. And I encourage folks, if you have any questions, yallvote.ms. Very simple. Yeah. But every piece of election information you'd ever want to know is on that website. So I encourage folks, again, yallvote.ms. Uh, take your ID. And I encourage folks to go in there, um, you know, educate. Let's, let's take some time, look at the candidates, and we, we, we focus so much on the presidential, and I get it, it's very important, mm -hmm. but don't forget, we've got Supreme Court races, we've got Court of Appeals races, and we've got Congressional, Senate, we've got uh, some other local races that will be on, on different pieces and parts of the state, so mm -hmm. 
take the time to go to, uh, we have a, a tool on our website, it's called My Election Day. And uh, you put your address in that, up pops basically a sample ballot, so you can take a look at your ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, all of your local elected officials, I encourage folks to understand who are your circuit clerks and who are your elections commissioners. Mm -hmm. Those are the folks, again, that do the heavy lifting when it comes to elections. So if you've got a question on election day, clearly you can call us, uh, and I encourage folks to do that. But you can also call your circuit clerk and election commissioner saying, hey, I'm on the ground, this is what I'm seeing, somebody needs to attend to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I encourage people to, to make sure they're aware of what's going on on election day. If you see something looks weird, something looks odd, please call our office. I think that's one of the most important things. We'll be out and about throughout the day. I'll have probably 20 to 30 folks from all that's in precincts around the state. That said, we can't make it to every one of them. Mm -hmm. So I encourage our voters, if you see something that looks a little bit off, you know, election integrity is so important to us. We don't just talk about it, we actually do it. And having our um, you know, citizens of the state that are out there going to vote as another set of eyes and ears is really important to us. So I just encourage folks to make sure we're doing that. Perfect, perfect. Well, so diving right into business services, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, we talk about one of the campaigns that the Secretary of State's office launched, which was Tap the Tape. Yes. Uh, which I know is your baby and you love, love to talk about. And so <laughs> tell us a little bit about that because in, in the back of my mind, what I'm thinking about is one of the things that the governor's been talking about recently, this Mississippi momentum, this influx of large economic development projects and jobs coming into the state. How do regulations or cutting regulations like that play into Mississippi momentum in the state? I think it's probably more important than people give it credit. Mm -hmm. when, when you're talking about regulation as a business owner, obviously you want to look at the tax structure. Mm -hmm. But that kind of hidden fee that's in the regulatory burden, uh, the, the, the time it takes to comply with regulations, the, the cost it takes to comply with regulations, mm -hmm. when you're looking at that, obviously the tax structure is kind of set. And then you say, well, you know, we need to cut some of these regulations to make it easier to do this in Mississippi. And that's exactly what we did with Tackle Tape. So everybody that's out there, if you own a business and you come up against some kind of regulatory burden that just doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, it's not for public safety benefit, not for public health benefit, uh, it doesn't make sense to, to, to protect Mississippians, we want you to call us and say, hey, look, I've run into this regulation, I don't think it makes sense. And typically from there, what we do is basically take a look at the regulation. Does the agency even have the ability to make that regulation, to, to enforce that regulation? If they don't, then obviously we're gonna get them to stop doing that. If they do, is there a way that we could cut that to where it's just as minimal as possible, understanding it's gonna achieve its goal of public safety or public health, but can we narrowly tailor it to where it makes it easier for that business to get around that regulation or to do that regulation and comply with the regulation? And then, you know, if it doesn't make sense and if you can't narrowly tailor it, and we just need to get rid of it, then let's get rid of it. And so we can do that by several different ways. If it's one of the 28 boards of commissions under the Occupational Licensing Review Commission, uh, then that board uh, can bring basically new regulations to the commission and the commission can strike them down, can rework them, or uh, the legislature actually gave the ability to the members of the RC, which is the governor, the attorney general, and our office, Secretary of State's office, to go back and look at old regulations. And if we think those are ones that, that aren't good, then let's get rid of them. And so that's where we added our strategic initiative under Tackle the Tape, 29 by 29. So there used to be 29 boards that just consolidated farmers and cosmetology down to one, so it's 28 now. And we launched this effort to go through all 29 by the year of 2029. So with that, we've done our first six now, and basically going through every single regulation under every one of these boards. So we've done six now. Uh, in our last OLRC meeting, there were two boards that we'd already reviewed, and many of the changes that they recommended. So tell us what this ORC meeting is. Yeah, so OLRC is basically, again, the Governor, Attorney General, and Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. And any one of these OLRC, Occupational Licensing Review Commission boards, so think about cosmetology, think about nursing, uh, contractors, think about people that need a license from the state to do their job. Mm -hmm. And so these boards and commissions have to come before us and say, hey, here's a new regulation. Uh, you know, is this, is this a good one? You, you're going to pass it and give us the ability to enforce this. Or not, and so that's really at the high level. That's kind of this second set of eyes that are looking at these regulations and understanding: is this good for business or not? Mm -hmm. And is it a public health benefit? Is it a public safety benefit? So we're going uh, through our first six now, and our last meeting was a week or two ago, and I loved it because two of the boards that we've gone through came, and basically most of their recommendations came from us. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm seeing is these boards are, are understanding now, wait a minute, the, the Secretary of State is serious about this. Yeah. Let's take a look at our regulations and see how we can dial them back mm -hmm. to make it easier to do business in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. 
And when I look at the tax structure, and I look at you know the regulatory burden that we're trying to cut, and we see over the last three years, they can average uh, roughly 55,000 new businesses in Mississippi every year. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Yeah. So it's not just talking about it, we're actually seeing that growth. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the most important thing. So to my business leaders out there, it doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, sometimes we focus on the big businesses, and that's great. But the backbone of our economy, we all know, is small business owners. Absolutely. So you small business owners are the ones I'm really focused on. Mm -hmm. You see a regulation that's, that's harmful for you, please let us know about it. Mm -hmm. and, and let us help our, you know, help you actually try to cut that burden and make it easier for your business to thrive. I don't think you could have said it better. And lastly, diving into the 16 section land. Mm -hmm. Help people understand what you all's work really looks like uh, from that input. Yeah, so that's, that's an interesting one. Um, and it, it kind of varies by administration from time to time. So basically what the law says is this, the local school boards are in control of their 16 section land. So they sign leases with folks and it can be a commercial lease, it can be a hunting and fishing, it can be a timber, it can be farming, it can be different types of leases. Mm -hmm. And so they go to the board and say, hey, look, we want to lease this. They work out you know, some kind of um, value. Sometimes it's, it's driven by market value, sometimes it's a bid process. Uh, that said, at the end of the day, we're the trustee of our 16 section land. So those leases then have to come to our office and we sign off on them. Historically, what you've sometimes seen is sometimes the Secretary of State is a little bit heavy handed on those. Mm -hmm. If it's a good old boy deal, then obviously there's room for the Secretary of State to step in. If it's driven by that market value or if it's driven by a, a good bid process, then the Secretary of State basically needs to take his hands off, her hands off, and just sign the lease. That's the school board's job. That's how the law is, is written. That's how the law should work. So depending on, again, the administration, you may see a different kind of um, interplay there between the office and local school boards. So we've, we've had as much as we can a really hands-off process. Um, that said, if the wheels are moving slowly, I don't mind calling the school board and saying, hey, look, you know, this business owner or this individual over here has been waiting for this. Where is it? We, we need to go. Again, that, that goes back to the whole idea of tackle the tape. Mm -hmm. Having an advocate at the Secretary of State's office is going to work on your behalf, no matter what it is. Yeah. That's my job. I work for the people of Mississippi, period. They're my bosses. So when they call and I can help them, I'm just doing my job. And uh, serving the people of Mississippi is, is quite the honor. Listen, I think that's the perfect place to end. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, you're very welcome. Listen, folks, if you aren't at the table, then you're on the menu. This is Emmanuel Williams with your In the Know segment here to 97.7 The Beat of the Capitol. Like that. Awesome. If you are at the table, you're on the menu. Liz, would you grab a photo of us and a photo of this 97 point? When do you think that'll play? Just